بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه ما بعد. So in these entire uh, surahs that we're doing, uh, surah we did surah al kahf and then surah Maryam. Now we're going to do surah Taha. Uh, eventually we're going to get to surah al Anbiya. All of these stories are all of these surahs are about stories. Nothing but stories. In fact, from the beginning to the end, you have nothing but one story after another. So I thought that in today's khatira, I'll take a step back instead of talking about a specific story, a specific ayah. Let's talk about the wisdom and the purpose of stories in the Quran. Why does Allah subhanahu wa taala mention so many stories in the Quran? And the word, of course, for story in Arabic is uh, qissa, and the plural is qasas. And uh, the word qissa in Arabic actually comes from qassa, and qassa means to retrace your steps. Qassa means to go back from the beginning and then do it all over again. And that is why, uh, for example, the mother of Musa uh, says uh, to uh, the sister of Musa uh, that uh, go, وَقَالَتْ لِأُخْتِهِ قُصِّيهِ she said to the sister, Qussihi. Qussi means follow the footsteps of Musa. So the verb Qassa means to follow the footsteps. Why does a story have to do with following the footsteps? Because what does a story do? You have to go back and from the beginning and follow the footsteps of the character that you are uh, searching about. So the word story comes from the Arabic verb, which means to go back and retrace what has happened. And that's a beautiful, uh, profound example of the Arabic language. And by the way, just as a, a footnote or a tangent, another word that is used for story in the Quran, it comes from the form of a fable, and that is asatir. And this is what the pagans call the stories of the Quran. Allah never calls the stories of the Quran asatir. The kafirs call the Quran in hada illa asatir al awwalin. And asatir means these are fables of old. Now, this is interesting for us here in English uh, speaking language because the term asatir comes from the ancient Latin historia. And historia eventually made its way to English as history. So the term history and asatir actually come from the same origin. And from history we also get our English term story. So the English word story and the Arabic asatir, asatir and history, asatir and story actually come from the same original root. And that is why they sound uh, similar. In any case, that's just FYI, not really to do with uh, stories. Of course, Quranic stories are very special. Allah says in the Quran, نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ القصص. We are the ones who recite to you the best of all stories. So the Quranic stories are the best of all stories. There are no stories better than the stories of the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبْرَةٌ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ In their stories, there is عِبْرَة. عِبْرَة means a point of benefit. So in Arabic, uh, a bridge is called... Ma'bar, right? Means you crossed over something. You got to another point. So Ibra, you took the story and you went with the story to a further point. This is what Ibra means. You extracted a fa'idah, you extracted a benefit. That's not directly from the story. So Allah Azza wa Jalla says, in their stories is profundity. In all the stories of the Quran, there is wisdom. And of the beautiful things of the stories of the Quran, if you compare Quranic stories to any other fiction work, or any other religious narrative. Look at the Bible, the Old Testament, the New Testament. The stories are full as the, uh, in those books as well. But the Quranic stories are very different. And anybody who reads these books will get the immediate difference. Of the simplest of differences, the Quranic story does not have any of the details that one finds in their biblical narratives. If you read the biblical narrative or any other book of fiction, you will find so many details, names, genealogies, places, and after a while the reader gets confused and lost. Who is this? Who is the son of that? Who begat whom? Where was this uh, person coming from? It all goes into one's... But look at the Quran. وَجَاءَ رَجُلٌ مِنْ أَقْصَى الْمَدِينَةِ A man came from the furthest part of the city. What's his name? What's his description? We don't need to know. The moral is a man comes from the furthest part of the city, right? Or look at the story of Yusuf. The king says, the minister says, the wife of the minister says, no names, because there's no need to get confused. You just need to get the point of the story. And if you look at the details of the Quranic story, they're always much less. And the wisdom for this is, you don't need to know these details. The wisdom is in the actual moral. It's in the message. And that, wallahi, even a child can read 
these stories and benefit and an adult and a very educated man can read and benefit and this is of the wisdoms of the Quranic stories now there are three types of Quranic stories the first of them is the stories of the prophets of old and this is the most common type of story and this is Surat Al-Kahf this is Surat uh, Maryam this is Surah Taha, this is Surah Al-Anbiya, the story of Ismail, the story of Adam, the story of Musa, the story of Ibrahim. This is the most common uh, type of story. The second type of story is that of a righteous person or, or anybody. So for example, uh, the man who goes and he asks, how can Allah resurrect this village after it has uh, been destroyed? So Allah Azza wa Jal causes him to die for a uh, hundred years. The story of Luqman, for example. Luqman is not a prophet. Okay, all of these stories are also mentioned. The story of Qarun. Qarun is an evil person. There is no prophet mentioned in the story. So we have a second genre of stories, incidents and places and people. And the third uh, story in the Quran is the story of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that is very important. And we did this in the entire seerah. Any time a verse was referenced uh, in the seerah, it's basically a story of the seerah. Walduha, alam nashrah alaka sadra, ya ayuhal muzammil. All of these are stories of the seerah. Now today's khatra will concentrate on the first type of story, and that is the story of the prophets of old. What is the wisdom in this narrative? Why does Allah mention hundreds of different stories? Well, there are wisdoms mentioned in the Quran itself and there are wisdoms that we can extract of the wisdoms that are mentioned explicitly in the Quran is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran وَكُلَّنْ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الرُّسُلِ مَا نُثَبِّتُ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ and this is how we narrate to you the stories of the prophets of old all of the prophets we have narrated them to you in the Quran why? لِنُثَبِّتَ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ so that we can affirm your own chest Meaning, we can affirm your resolve. So, stories inspire. And that is why everybody loves to hear stories. You know what, we, what do we do with children at night? We tell them bedtime stories, right? And wallahi, there's still a child in all of us. When a story begins, our ears perk up. And that's why if you want to have a conversation with anybody, stories are always the way to break the ice. Because everybody wants to know what happened at the end, right? It's still ingrained in us. So stories are attention grabbers. Immediately they get the point. And when they get the point, there's, if there is a moral, if there is a lesson, that is the Quranic story. We tell you these stories so that you can affirm your resolve. لِنُثَبِّتَ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ As well of the benefits of the stories of old is that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is told that the previous prophets have suffered just like you have suffered. And this helps resolve our pain. You know when we know somebody else has the same trouble that we have, it kind of helps us. You know what? He managed, I can also manage. Somebody else has gone through the same dilemma, the same problem. It helps us as well. So Allah Azza wa Jal is telling him in the Quran that the same stories that we're telling to you, the reason we're telling this to you is that you will get affirmed in your resolve. You know the saying goes in English that shared joy is doubled and shared sorrow is halved. This is an English saying. When you share a joy, it doubles. And when you share a sorrow, it's halved. And this is one of the wisdoms of Quranic stories as well. That the Prophet wasallam sees the troubles of Musa. And we learn from the seerah that when our Prophet was once irritated by one of the, the Bedouins that had come up to him, what did he say? He calmed himself down by saying what? Wallahi, Musa was irritated more than I was and he remained patient. لَقَدْ أُوذِيَ Musa. Musa was harmed more than I was by his own people and yet he remained patient. So this tells us of the wisdoms of stories is that it helps us resolve. It helps us have role models. Even our Prophet ﷺ had those role models. As well, stories tell us uh, methodology for preaching, methodology for tactics, for engaging with other people. And uh, again, our Allah Azza wa Jal tells our Prophet ﷺ multiple times, take Ibrahim as your role model. لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي إِبْرَاهِيمَ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي إِبْرَاهِيمَ you have a perfect example in Ibrahim. So stories tell us the role models. They give us comfort. They make us see methodologies. Of the benefits of stories as well is that it serves as a warning. 
for those who reject the prophets of Allah, what will happen to them? Every single Quranic story, the successful people are the believers. Every Quranic story without exception, those who reject Allah become the losers. This is a common motif of every single story. And therefore, those who reject Allah, they are told to think about the consequences of that. And of the wisdoms as well of the Quranic stories, and this is actually a very interesting wisdom, uh, and this is a very detailed wisdom as well. Uh, we don't have time to go into all of it, but I'm just going to mention it here. One needs to understand the intellectual status of Arabia at the time. Reading and writing was non-existent. There was not a single library in all of the Arabian Peninsula. People did not know these stories, and the Arabs had no curiosity to know the knowledge of the children of Ismail, the children of Ishaq, Bani Ismail basically, right? Bani Ishaq basically. They have no concern for the Judeo-Christian narrative. What has it got to do with them? And if you look at the seer, remember in early Mecca, the Quraysh went to Medina and the Jews said, I will give you three questions. You will be able to trump him because he has no idea of these three questions. One of them was, tell me the story of Yusuf and his brethren. What happened? And another was the story of Musa and Khidr the third. So the point being, nobody knew these stories. This is, you know, it's difficult for our youngsters to understand when there was no internet, when there was no Google, when there was no Wikipedia, when there was no library. People had no knowledge. Imagine coming across uh, a, a tribe in the Amazon that has just been discovered. They're cut off from civilization. Imagine. They have no access to any information highway. And lo and behold, there's a person amongst them. He knows the histories of the ancient Romans. And he knows the languages of the world. And he knows this and that. It's going to be a miracle. How did this happen? Well, this is exactly what the Qur'an mentions about the stories within the Qur'an. That our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as an Arab from the children of Ismail, is telling the Yahud and the Nasara their stories in a better manner, in a more perfect version. And this knowledge was simply unknown to the people at that time and place. There were no Jews and Christians in Mecca. The Jews of Medina and the Jews of other areas never told their story. There was a, a, a secrecy involved. You have to be of their own. There was no Old Testament in Arabic for the first 200 years of Islam. There was no translation of the Old Testament in Arabic. Even if there was a translation, our Prophet did not read. Yet, all of these stories, the story of Joseph, the story of Jonah and the whale, the story of Job Ayyub, the story of uh, Ishaq, the, story, the entire narrative, the story of Musa, how many details are mentioned. And in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this as being a miracle. Allah says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that tell them, where did these stories uh, come from? فَقَدْ لَبِثْتُ فِيكُمْ عُمُرًا مِّنْ قَبْلِ I lived an entire lifetime before this Quran came down and you knew me. 40 years you knew me. I didn't have any access to education. I didn't give these deep philosophical talks. Where is the Quran coming from? It is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says in the Quran in multiple verses, وَمَا كُنْتَ لَدَيْهِمْ You were not there when they were arguing uh, over Maryam, uh, 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 when, uh, uh, when uh, Zakaria and his people were arguing over Maryam. وَمَا كُنْتَ لَدَيْهِمْ يَخْتَصِمُ When you weren't there, how did you know the story? Allah says to the Prophet ﷺ, وَمَا كُنْتَ بِجَانِبِ الْغَرْبِيِّ إِذْ قَضَيْنَا إِلَى مُوسَى الْأَمْرَى وَمَا كُنْتَ مِنَ الشَّاهِدِينَ You weren't a witness when we spoke to Musa on the side of Mount Tur, on the western side of Mount Tur. You weren't there to see this. How did you know this? Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, this is a miracle coming from him that Allah says in the Quran, ما كنت تعلمها أنت ولا قومك من قبل هذا. Neither you nor your people knew these stories before the coming of the Quran. So one of the motifs of the Quranic stories is to prove that the Quran is indeed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course the most important, and that's the most obvious one, is that each one of these stories has lessons for us. Lessons in morality, lessons in ethics, lessons in manners, lessons in patience, lessons in hikmah, in wisdom. Each and every story. And this is the amazing reality, my dear brothers and sisters. When we listen to these stories, even in translation form, automatically we can derive benefits from them without knowing anything of tafsir or advanced fiqh or anything. And the more we gain in knowledge, the more benefits we will derive. So right now, we recited in the Quran that Musa uh, is told to go to Fir'aun. إِذْهَبْ إِلَىٰ فِرْعَوْنَ إِنَّهُ طَغَىٰ فَقُوْ 
فَقُولَا لَهُ قَوْلَ لَيِّنًا لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُ أَوْ يَخْشَى Musa is told by Allah, go to Fir'aun, he has transgressed, and make sure you speak to him in a very gentle and soft manner. Perhaps he might be guided. Now you don't need to have a PhD in advanced tafsir to know one simple thing. If the best human being on earth at the time is being told to go to the worst human being in the history of mankind, not just the worst human being at the time. The worst human being in the history of mankind, by the way. You should know this point. That the worst human being, Allah says in the Quran, وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَدْخِلُ آلَ فِرْعَوْنَ أَشَدَّ الْعَذَابِ The family of Fir'aun, father and son, because there were two. The one who adopted Musa and took care of him died, and then his son became the Fir'aun after him. Those two people are the worst in all of humanity. So the worst person... Even him, Allah says, when you go speak to, speak to him gently and softly. Maybe he might be guided. You don't need to have advanced knowledge to know Allah is teaching us to be gentle when you give da'wah. To be gentle when you go and interact with others and so on and so forth. And of course, the more knowledge that one learns, the more tafsir one reads, the more knowledge one gains, then the more one can derive from every story in the Qur'an. The fact of the matter, dear brothers and sisters, the stories of the Qur'an are one of the most important facets of the Qur'an. Many books have been written that qasas al-Qur'an, just about the stories of the Qur'an, specific tafsir, there's a genre of tafsir, that our scholars of tafsir would write an entire tafsir just about the stories of the Qur'an. Therefore, let us pay attention to these stories and let us remember that Allah Azza wa Jal tells us there are no better stories than the stories of the Qur'an and that there are wisdoms and benefits to be derived from these stories. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.